Welcome back to another episode of Boomer Bus, your home for NFL Draft Talk. I'm your host, Terry, and today, doing the 2019 quarterbacks, and then we're going to wrap it up with the real grade for the Kansas City Chiefs. So, quarterbacks, um, real exciting time uh, in the draft season when you get to evaluate quarterbacks, especially coming off the O-line, but I'll tell you, it's hard, man. <laughs> evaluating, as we most people know, evaluating quarterbacks is hard, but not even just the the mental part of it, which is a whole nother side of it, but the physical part of it by just watching tape is really hard to kind of get a grasp if you're not up close. But every year I get excited and I remember real fast, like, man, you know, this is tough. But there are certain guys I will always say that you can just tell they have it. And, you know, people talk about the it factor and you can never really define it, but you could just tell when some guys have it and it clicks with them. So there's that. But there's a lot to talk about with these quarterbacks, not just the actual prospects, but the position itself. I try to speak a little bit about the position each time. But if you don't think this these things are important, the all the quarterback tools and all that, all you have to do is watch the Super Bowl. We just had a real life example. And, and not just Brady, but the whole situation itself of why you need to have a quarterback that can do all the things. And when I mean all the things, I mean, they can stay in the pocket. They can deliver a throw with people and pressure in their face. They can deliver a throw with pressure around their feet. They can, um, use the correct mechanics and tools to step in the throws and get the ball downfield. Most importantly, they can analyze where coverage is pre-snap, what play they're running, and what's probably going to be the best place to put the ball. And they got to take care of the ball. So quarterbacks have to do a lot. But I think as I talk about the nature of uh, the change in position, I think people have gotten comfortable with this idea of spread quarterbacks and that, oh, well, it could work. And it's kind of like the spread offense itself, where I say that um, the gimmicks and things, they can get you a first down. They can get you a lot of yards. They can win you a game. They might win you a division, but they're not going to win you a championship. You cannot win an NFL with gimmicks. You cannot win as a quarterback if you're not an actual traditional pocket passer. It's just the fact. I'm not sure why everybody wants that to not be the case. People want to keep arguing for the other quarterbacks. But it's been proven way over. The only thing more true than a pocket passing quarterback is defense wins championships. And so and so you look at all that and I look at these quarterbacks and I always remember in last night's Super Bowl is a good reason to remember you have to have these tools because in the NFL, you're not going to get those clean pockets you got in college, especially if you're at a good program. And not only are you not going to get those pockets, you're going to have to make the tough throws every time and not every time, but every time it comes down to, um, something crucial, crunch time, you're going to have to make those tough throws, not just getting hit and throwing, not having pressure and throwing, but throwing against against somebody. It's not going to be the easy, wide-open receiver all the time. You're going to have to make a throw that's contested. And so Tom Brady's the best at that we know. But even Jared Goff, I think for as much as he's been a little bit exposed there were times in that last drive, too, where he still stood in the pocket tough and made big-time throws while getting hit. So as much as some people try to get down on Jared Goff, I actually still feel pretty optimistic about him. And then this just brings up that question about the Mahomes draft class, Trubisky and everybody, because people want to talk about because they're in the uh, Pro Bowl. So the first thing I'll say to that is the Pro Bowl doesn't really mean much. That's kind of a joke. Uh, the all pro is more of an indicator, uh, because you got replacements in the Pro Bowl and it's fan voted. So them being in the Pro Bowl doesn't mean anything. Vince Young was in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> Number two, um, that class was not a good class. And 
people get confused with prospect versus NFL players. A prospect is what, what, what is your full portfolio, uh, coming into the draft? So that takes into account your strengths, your weaknesses, your ceiling and potential, all those different things. And we label you a prospect accordingly because the prospect is only about where you're valued to get drafted at. It's not so much, I mean, part of it is how good of a player you'll become, but it's not about validation or anything. It's about where do we want to draft you at? Where do we value at? That's all the prospect is. So just because I label somebody a five-star prospect, and they go on to do whatever in the NFL that doesn't all of a sudden change what prospect they were. And it's not like some people are like, oh, it looks like you're wrong on that. And it's like, not really. That's why you got to go deeper to numbers and see what things I said. But for me, it's not about predicting what this player will be. It's just portfolio and the cat, uh, the capacity they have to be a certain type of player. So. Anyway, you look at uh, Mahomes, you look at Watson and Trubisky for whatever they've become so far. Still, at the time coming out, they just weren't good prospects for different reasons. And they've gotten to where they are now for different reasons. So that's just kind of what it is. So anyway, let's get into these quarterbacks. Uh Going to try to do the top guys and then maybe throw in another person that I like. Number one, we got Drew Locke out of Mizzou, uh, 6'3", 223. So for me, uh, I'm not sure exactly where everybody has these quarterbacks at. I just kind of go with who's the top names. Uh, so for me, Drew Locke was pretty good. I mean, he was pretty decent. I, I don't know that he was great at any one thing. I thought he was just average to above average at most things. Um, his arm, I think is pretty good. So I great, that's my gradable trait. So out of five, I gave him a level four arm. Um, and the big thing for me is mechanics. I, and that can be tough for people to judge or understand, but knowing when their legs are tied to their arms, as they say. So when you're not just throwing off your back foot or throwing off a weird platform, when you're actually stepping into your throw and using the power from your legs to make a throw. So, uh, I liked his lower body mechanics. I, not so much about his upper body mechanics. It seems to me like he has a pitcher motion. And the reason the mechanics matter is because it helps create the velocity. It helps unlock your throwing power. And then, of course, it depends, it changes where you can throw from in the pocket. And so a lot of the times these guys with these side winding, like side arms, they they get hit on their linemen or it's easier to hit them in the pocket by a defender because they're not getting that vertical arm that you want uh them to have. So there's that. And again, uh I think he's got I think he's got some good athleticism, but he's uh probably I I think he's a solid athlete. I I wouldn't say he's I say he's more than above average, but he's not super elusive in the pocket. It's kinda easy to take down. And I'm not really impressed by his pocket ability. And a lot of times I'm not impressed by quarterback's pocket ability because in college they just, yeah, they don't, they don't really know how to do that yet. But outside of that, uh, I liked his medium game, his medium and short game. Accuracy is pretty good. Sometimes he has, uh, he has some weird, uh, inconsistencies that are kind of random. Uh, but for the most part, I, I dig his accuracy, his deep ball accuracy, not so much. Uh, it, it was a really low hit rate when he was throwing deep. So that kind of worries me too. I mean, he shows some touch sometimes, but just, you know, missed a lot of, uh, throws. So, and then kind of the mental part. I think he's definitely trapped in that spread mentality where it's not that he's forcing it to the first option, but they're telling him where to go. If it's not there, then he'll try to extend the play a little bit um, and make a different throw. But I don't think he understands his full concept. You can tell that 
he kind of uh, breaks it down once that first read isn't there and tries to improvise. So the progression, I think, isn't necessarily there for Locke. And um, one other thing that I didn't like about Locke is that he never really went for the the first down. A lot of times he would just throw to whoever was open. And I know that sounds like duh, but when you have third down, you need to convert. And it seemed like, you know, you're dumping it off just to dump it off or something when instead of taking shots. Now, I don't think he's risk adverse, but I do think that's something um, that I noticed on tape. So for me, uh, I mean, I don't label him as a prospect yet, but right now I, I, I think he's got potential, but he's got a lot of work to do. Number two, you got Daniel Jones out of Duke, uh, 6'5", 215. Really love Daniel Jones. I love Daniel Jones. And when you're talking about (coughs) pocket quarterbacks and being able to do all those things, this is what you're talking about. There's uh, some things he can work on, but for the most part, I love his ability in the pocket. I love his ability to uh, move his feet, manipulate the pocket, step up, make a throw without uh, putting his eyes down. So he can keep his eyes down or without putting his eyes to the pocket. He keeps his eyes uh, looking at the field, remains a passer, steps up, delivers a smooth pass. That's a huge thing. Uh, pressure is probably one of the biggest things, as we saw with golf. That's one of the biggest things in the NFL. How do you work around and work through pressure? And I think a, a lot of quarterbacks that don't know how to work in a pocket and move in a pocket and stay a passer, they really struggle with pressure early on. So I really liked his feet. I really love, I love his mechanics. All of it is very prototypical, gets his arm nice and high to a 90 degree angle, uh, brings his elbow up, all those good things. He ties his, uh, he ties his uh, lower body to his um, arm. Sometimes he brings his leg up, but that's kind of a small thing. Uh, yeah, so everything in the pocket and the feet, I love that. I like that uh, he can stay in and be tough and deliver a throw against pressure, which most of the quarterbacks I've seen, I'll give it to them, they have. In the past, a lot of quarterbacks were not good at that. A lot of quarterbacks would just run straight out of the pocket, take off, and, you know, throw the ball away or try to scramble. A lot of these quarterbacks do stand in and try to make a throw now, so that's good to see. Uh And I just think, overall, the thing about Daniel is that his accuracy is really good. Whether you're talking about over the middle in the short game or the deep ball, I love his deep ball accuracy. He has great touch. He understands what a, the leverage of the defensive back is and where he needs to put the ball. I think uh his deep ball accuracy is probably the best or one of the best out of the whole tail that before he throws the or before he snaps the ball. You can just tell by the way what he's reading and how quickly he makes decision. He has a quick release as well, so that helps. But he knows not only where he wants to go with the ball, but he knows where his options are if that doesn't work out. And he can tell, as you can see with the better quarterbacks in the league, once they see what the coverage is before the snap and the play starts breaking down, they know where the other people are going to be open at because they saw that, okay, this safety move here, so that means they only could be covering this or that, or this corner went with this guy. So that means this backside person won't be uh, covered. Those are the advanced level quarterback skills that you rarely see. And I'm not saying he's Andrew Luck, but that's the last time I saw a quarterback with that type of processing skill. And so I'm really excited about Daniel Jones. And I think he's pretty mobile. He's not super fast or anything. But I think they, they use them on a number of quarterback runs. He's a tough runner. And I think he's a lot more quicker than people give him credit for. So I haven't really seen a quarterback besides Luck. I mean, Luck has a little bit of athleticism, but I guess I haven't really seen a quarterback with his level of athleticism and his level of quarterback skills at this age. And so, um, 
him with a new supporting cast of NFL players, I think it's going to be scary, especially if he gets an O-line because Duke didn't do, do him any favors and he still was able to ball out. So if you want to watch him uh be impressive, watch him against Clemson, uh the national championship defense, and see how well he was able to play. All right, so number three would be Ohio State's Dwayne Haskins. I am not a fan of Dwayne Haskins. I know that a lot of people are talking about him possibly being number one and all that. And I don't think there's a true number one in, in the media right now of quarterbacks, but Dwayne is a lot of people's picks. Not sure why. I think he's going to be taller than 6'3". They list him at 6'3", 220. He looks taller, but I'm like, okay, he's not massive where he's some freak size (laughs) <laughs> you know, he does have a, fr- a a good arm. It's not a freaky arm, but I gave him a four and a half out of five. So it's not a Mahomes arm or anything like that. Um, but he, he has a big arm. I'll give him that. But outside of that, not a fan of really any of his game because he's not super mobile. He'll take off sometimes, but he's not fast. He's hard to bring down because he's big, but... He's not like going to truck anybody. Um, his mechanics are really bad. He has a really ugly wind up throw. I mean, it might not be ugly to fans, but it's ugly to people who know the position where you cock it all the way back, wind it up and throw it. It is the definition of how you're not supposed to throw a football. That's how you know he's got a big arm because he still rips it. But he could be a lot more efficient in his motions than he actually is. His lower body mechanics are fine. I don't have too many issues with that. They're okay. But it's just the throwing motion is, it, it, it wastes a lot of times and it's going to, uh, definitely be a, a concern with fumbles on the next level. Cause again, those pockets won't be as clean as he had at Ohio State. And then again, some people are like Haskins stays, he's a pocket passer. Not exactly. I mean, he doesn't run around and throw, but number one, Ohio State didn't have a lot of people break down the pocket around him. And number two, even when they did, he didn't manipulate the pocket. He just kind of stood there and tried to make a throw or he got hit. And so that worries me. I mean, because he didn't show the ability to climb up the pocket and make a throw. He didn't show the awareness in the pocket of pressure. So that, that, that's my number one fear when it comes to quarterbacks, quarterbacks who don't know how to work in the pocket, because that's the first thing you're going to get tested on in the NFL. Um, now as far as his processing, I, it's a little hard to tell from what I can see. It looks like he's doing half field reads where he picks before the snap, picks which half of the field he's going to target and then works that combination, um, which is okay. But again, when you get to advanced level, you got to know what's happening on the other side. So when things break down, you know where to go. It seems like he doesn't force it to his number one receiver. But it does seem like he's going to force it to that side of the field because that's where he wants to go. And honestly, a lot of uh, teams I saw are doing this, a lot of crossing routes. But Ohio State probably did it the most. I mean, I feel like half his completions were to crossing routes. It was very uh, catch and run offense where it was easy throws and letting athletes go be athletes. And so while the numbers might look good, um, the one thing I, I was thinking is we sometimes see a receiver and we're like, that route tree isn't that impressive. He didn't run a lot of complicated routes. I felt like that with Haskins as a quarterback. I'm like, his throwing tree wasn't that impressive. He didn't throw many contested passes ever. It was either wide open or, you know, just easy dink and dunk. So that worries me. And, uh, he, he seems to be risk averse. So like I talked about earlier where Drew Locke doesn't throw for first down, Haskins seems to me like he just goes to the open guy. Like he's being overprotective with the ball and not taking any chances. And the game that really like made that stand out was the Purdue game. 
They're getting blown, even before they're blown out. Three touchdowns, they still could have made it back. And you, you're down three, you gotta go. And he's still throwing check downs. He's still dumping it off, like, on third and long. That's the ultimate situation where if you're down that much, just go for it. And he still didn't go for it. When you had nothing to lose, he still didn't go for it. So that scares me too. Um, and I wonder how much they'll be able to coach that out of him. Uh, because at that point, you'll become a game manager or Dink and Dacker. <laughs> I'm just playing. Dak, Dak will do it more now that he has Cooper. But yeah, you'll fall into that Dak, uh, Prescott mentality where everything's just safe throws. So there's that hate is deep ball accuracy. I don't even know if I've seen him complete. I, I mean, I've seen him complete a deep ball, but. It's not good. It's overthrow city almost every time. But I like his, I really like his accuracy in the short to medium area. Not just his ability to rip it, but he does have really good ball placement. So there's something there. So overall, um, I understand that he's probably got the biggest arm. So he's going to be the most attractive as a project, but I think he has a lot of work to do. And so, uh, out of those three, I definitely like Daniel Jones, hands down, number one. And I'd probably take Locke over Haskins right now. Now, I gotta talk about Kyler Murray. Um, the reason I, I'm not gonna go too much into it, cause it's a good chance he might not be in the NFL. So, uh, there's that whole decision. But to me, I, I think he is definitely in the conversation of top three, maybe top two quarterbacks. I know the height thing we all know in the Russell Wilson's comparison, and they're they're definitely accurate. It's not just because they're both short and play baseball, but because they play baseball, the way they throw and the way they move in a short area is very similar. The only difference is Murray is like, uh, three times the athlete that Russell Wilson is. So super fast, super quick, all that good stuff. But he has that arm. He has a big arm. He could put it downfield. He could use velocity. Um, and he, it's tough. It's tough to say he doesn't have great pocket ability. Even though he takes off and scrambles a lot, he knows when pressure's coming. He is very good at that. If you're talking about pocket manipulation, I've seen him get to everywhere in the pocket. It might not feel traditional because he's doing it so fast, but he's good in the pocket, man, and he's tough to tackle. He's fast. He can take off, and he's a play extender. He's a Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers in that sense. So I, I like his accuracy. I like um, his medium stuff is really strong. His deep ball is pretty good. I think he's a top three quarterback. I don't know that he's going to go to the NFL, though. So there's that. And then one name I'll throw out there that I enjoyed. I think uh, there's a number of other good quarterbacks outside of that group. But for me, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Brett Ripien, I guess, Ripien from Boise State. Now, I'm a sucker because... Um, he's a pro style quarterback. So I'm a sucker for those because it's a lot easy to translate what you're seeing to the NFL. And so sometimes I'll get burnt on that. And I'm not sure he's a starter or more than a game manager or, you know, but I do think he, uh, has some value because he does process pretty well and he does already have the built in tools to run a pro style. So I definitely give people points for that. And I think his arm's good. Usually what it is is you get guys like this that don't have strong arms, uh, like a Nathan Peterman, and then it just doesn't work out. But I think his arm's pretty good. And uh, if you put him around a good offense, he could definitely help you out. So he, he'll be a guy that I'll be interested to keep my eye on. So there we are with the quarterbacks. And again, talking about the trend, I think quarterbacks – that I'm seeing at least have definitely changed. Like even in the last year, uh, I talked a lot about the influence of Aaron Rodgers and people trying to be play extenders and trying to run around and get us somebody open. I didn't see a lot of that this year. Like I said, Kyler Murphy definitely big with that, uh, or Murray, sorry, but 
honestly, a lot of, at least these quarterbacks, I didn't see a lot of that. I have seen a lot of people stand tough and deliver the throw. I've seen a lot of people, a lot more people throwing the ball away and just protecting the ball overall. Like I rarely see someone force the ball to the first target. That used to be the standard with spread quarterbacks. It's like they looking at one guy and they're forcing that ball. Now screens and stuff and you know, bubbles, there's still some of that. But for the most part, these guys don't make the dumb throw. And so that's really encouraging to see. All right. So lastly, let's wrap this up with the real grade for the Kansas City Chiefs 2016. As we pull it up, you got nine picks. We'll go down the line. Uh, number or not number two, but second round, you had Chris Jones out of Mississippi State. Starter, star in the league. I think one of the better interior linemen in the league. Number three, you got, I can't even pronounce that dude's name. Russell, a <laughs> cornerback from Notre Dame. Uh, no longer with the team. He's on the Bengals, I believe, but he's not a starter there, just kind of there. Number four, you got Parker Inger. He's no longer in the league. I think he might be on a practice squad, but not on an active roster. Fourth round, Eric Murray still with the team. He's a starter at safety. They moved him to safety. Um, I think he might start just when uh, Eric Berry's not in, or I'm not sure, but I know he's had a lot of starts for them. Demarcus Robinson, fourth round, still on the team, uh, kind of contributor. Fifth round, Kevin Hogan, not on the team with the Broncos, still in the league. Now, fifth round, Tyreek Hill, of course, probably one of the best receivers in the league. Uh, six, DJ White out of the league. And sixth round, Dottie Nichols out of the league. So, nine picks. Out of nine picks, you have four people or three people not in the league anymore. Um, two of them were six round picks, so those are washes. But one of them was a fourth round pick. That's a big miss. Uh, out of your nine picks, you have Four people still on the team. Out of the four people that are still on the team, three are starters. And out of the three starters, two are stars in the NFL. So you look at that nine picks, you get four, you keep four out of the nine. That's, uh, right around half. So that's not a bad clip at all. Uh, especially when you got no first round pick. Um, but that's not bad at all. Missing on the fourth round pick does hurt, but you get a top three player in the league in the fifth round. That's huge. And then your second round pick, you hit with him and there's a star too. Not even a first round pick, but a second round pick, even though they're important. So for me, um, I got to go with a B. Got to go with a B. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you get big points for Tyreek Hill. Uh, most definitely, but taking into consideration all the other people that are really contributing or are no longer in the league. Yeah, I get them a B. So go to the comment section. Let me know what you think about the Chiefs draft. Let me know what you think about these quarterbacks this year. Uh, what do you think about quarterback prospects in general? Do you think they're getting better, worse? Uh, let me know what you think. Share it around, get the convo started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for listening.